Good afternoon. A thousand vessels are preparing to travel in a grand procession along the River Thames in the Diamond Jubilee celebrations that are now taking to the water. The river pageant in honour of the Queen's 60-year reign is the largest to be held in London since the 17th century. And despite the rain, thousands of street parties are being held across the United Kingdom as part of the big lunch jubilee celebrations. Our Royal Correspondent Nicholas Witchell has our first report on the events of the day. The day is turning out to be, well, very British, and most especially in terms of the weather. The rain came down fairly constantly through the night and into the morning. And yet, despite the rain, tens of thousands of people were already taking their places along the riverbank undeterred. It won't dampen our spirits. We'll be here cheering her on. So it really is a very, very special occasion. Remember the coronation and the pouring rain then. Does it matter? Oh, well, it just makes, makes you feel proud to be British again. It's just a shame the weather couldn't have obliged. On the river, the boats have been moving into their final positions. This was the belfry, carrying the bells which will signal the start of the pageant being pushed upriver. The royal barge, which will carry the Queen and her immediate family, was having the finishing touches put to it, close attention, not surprisingly, to the rain canopy. The man in charge of the staging of the pageant says the damp weather won't matter. To finally see those boats muster on the Thames, it just, it just lifts the spirit. And a uh, little bit of rain with all this enthusiasm around, there'll be no spirits dampened on the Thames today. At Downing Street, the Prime Minister reconfirmed to Andrew Marr something that is self-evident, that the Queen will never retire. She, in pursuing her duties, has been 100% dedicated, professional. It's hard to think of ever her putting a foot wrong, and you get the sense with her that she will go on doing the amazing job she's done for this country uh, as long as she possibly can. So, 1,000 vessels are taking their final places for a pageant which promises to be the most spectacular event staged on the Thames for more than 300 years. At 2.40, the pageant will begin at Albert Bridge, when the Jubilee bells peal just off Battersea Park. The Royal Barge will fall in behind the man-powered vessels and lead the flotilla down a six-mile stretch of the river, under the bridges, past the Houses of Parliament and the Victoria Embankment, and under five more bridges until finally it reaches Tower Bridge, where the Royal Barge will moor at the Naval Shore Station HMS President. From there, at around four o'clock, the Queen will watch the pageant's finale. That finale will involve waterborne orchestras, choirs and fireworks, and with luck by then, the rain will have passed. Well, it may not be quite the weather that the organizers had been hoping for, but all the way along the river, the people who've come to watch really don't seem to mind. The crowds are gathered and the river is ready. The oarsmen are at their stations. <laughs> Elsewhere street parties are underway. Prince Charles dropped in on one near Piccadilly in central London. But it will be the river which gave life to London when the city was founded here, which will today provide the floating stage for this jubilee pageant in tribute to the Queen. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, at Tower Bridge. As we've heard, it's not just royalty on the river. Hundreds of boat owners from across the United Kingdom have travelled to London to take part in today's event. And Robert Hall has been talking to some of them. Well, amazing scenes here between Putney and Hammersmith bridges on the Thames. Uh, it started grey and drizzly, but the weather has lifted. And as every new boat comes up the river, the sense of anticipation is growing. There are vessels here from every inland waterway, from every port, right the way around our coast. People have travelled uh, many, many miles to be here to join this procession. Let's find out about this one here. Good afternoon, sir. Tell me, tell me who you are and what the, what the history of this vessel is. Uh, my name is Chris Ashton. This is Atta Boy. She was built in 1915, and she was at the Battle of Dritland aboard HMS Royalist. She, she, so she's, a, she's seen some military service. She has indeed, yeah. Yeah. And, and how, and how difficult has it been to get her here and all the ups and downs of this? It's been a trial, but we're here, <laughs> so we're going to enjoy it. So, um, no, everything's. OK, we're fine, and I think the people here are fantastic. So Tremendous atmosphere. Fantastic atmosphere so far this morning, yeah. 
There are vessels here representing pretty well every part of the working life of a river and indeed our coastal communities as well. So let's move in and talk to the people here and try and find out a little, about, a little bit about uh, where they've come from. Good afternoon. Hello, sir. Who can tell me a little bit about your vessel? Okay, I can. Right, she is steam cutter number 438. She was built in 1897, which is the same year as Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, so uh, a, a great link there. And uh, she was built by the Royal Navy to be carried on board a frigate uh, and would have been used as a ship-to-shore runaround. So she was built for HMS Espiegle. How much work has gone into getting her looking as brilliant as she does? <laughs> An like awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> Many yes, years' yes, worth yes, of yes, work yes, to yes, restore yes, her. But a fantastic thing to be part of this. Oh, it's wonderful. Just wonderful. Absolutely magnificent. Well, we uh, wish you a wonderful day. Thank you thank very, you much, very indeed. much indeed. Thank so there you are, just a taste of what's going to be on offer for the millions of people now lining the riverbanks downstream of us here as this amazing procession prepares to move off. Robert Hall there, thank you very much. Well, one of the main launch points for many of the boats is just down the river from here at Putney, and our correspondent Mike Sargent is there. Mike, not long to go now. No, the atmosphere is really building, and it's been a wonderful spectacle here in the last hour or so. Skiffs, skulls, rowboats, gondolas and dragon boats, they've all been launching from here and propelling themselves off down the river to join this vast armada, this collection of vessels of every type, size and vintage. Let's just quickly talk to some people watching the display. What do you make of it so far? It's been awesome. It's Fantastic. so much fun. Yeah, great time. Can't wait for it to carry on. Woo! It's quite a sight, hasn't it? Really colourful. Yeah. People really, really getting into yeah. the spirit. Yeah. It's great. Everybody's really getting into the spirit of the jubilee. So Union fantastic. Jacks everywhere. Yeah. Brilliant. Woo! Woo! Okay, thanks very much. We enjoy the <laughs> spectacle as the many thousands who are now lining the banks of the River Thames will do as well. Mike Sargent in Putney, thank you very much. Well, London's Battersea Park is just one of the main venues for the crowds who want to see what's going on during the celebrations. Hundreds of people have been queuing in the rain today and amongst them our reporter Lorna Gordon. They came early and came prepared. Friends and families determined to be part of the big day. But how can we miss today? You know, we wanted to get a really good spot, so we knew we had to get up early. We knew we had to invest in some waiting and queuing, didn't we? Yeah, I think it's good because um, our family's really um, royal. I'm a bit tired, but it's all worth it because I can't wait to see the Queen, and I think she's very good at being Queen. We all admire the Queen, so, uh, so 60 years in the same job, it deserves to be rewarded. Here at Battersea Park, as the gates opened, first a trickle, then a rush, as people ran to secure the best views of the river. <laughs> Chairs, brollies, blankets laid out, and union flags are plenty. I've been here since about 7 o'clock this morning, so uh, we've come down from Manchester and Gloucester, so we did a bit sprint now, 10 minute quick. So we're here, but at least we've got brilliant, brilliant seats, haven't we? So that's great. A few layers on and I've got the seat and I'm all right. I'll just get a few beers and I'll be happy. Dunkirk Spirit is queuing up for... Gosh, an hour and a half. <laughs> it's still some time till the flotilla gets underway, but already the spots are marked, the crowd is getting deeper and the excitement, well, it's starting to grow. For some, this will be their first jubilee. Others, though, have more experience of these big national celebrations. So just tell them, there's a, it's not in here yet, but it will be in here in 15 minutes. We're really excited. We all came down for the other two jubilees. This is my third one. I've done the silver, I've done the gold, we're on the diamond. So we're waiting for another good 10 years and we'll do the next one. Enthusiastic, good-natured, patriotic, an outpouring of affection for the Queen, undampened by this very British weather. Una Gordon, BBC News, Battersea Park. Well, the celebrations aren't just here in London, they're being held across the country. Organisers want local communities to get together for the big lunch. And our reporter, Chris Buckler, is at one in York. Chris. Yes, Simon, just as in towns and cities across the UK, here in York, people have had to battle against the weather, but they've simply put tents up and got on with it. And look at the spread you can see here. Plenty of red, white and blue food to go along with the occasion. And people have really been getting into the spirit, dressed up. But as you can imagine, all of this has taken plenty of planning. 
Do you want to tell the kids to come and sit ready to... For days, people have been preparing for a party. Cooking, baking... Even practicing for some jubilee-inspired entertainment. Right, it's right in front of you now. This is pin the tail on the corgi. <laughs> Something for our grandchildren to look back on when they're older. I can look back on things that I remember occasions like the Silver Jubilee, the Coronation V Day. It's just part of our history. But as neighbours and families come together across the UK, are today's street parties about the monarchy or the community? It's about the community, um, but I think the monarchy is giving a great reason for therefore having a celebration. After days of getting ready for the Diamond Jubilee in the sunshine, the planned big lunches have faced problems caused by another great British tradition, summer rain. But people have been battling against the weather, determined to celebrate no matter what. Sylvia and Michael Fillingham were among those who gathered in Albion Avenue to mark the Queen's coronation six decades ago. Now a married couple, they're here again for this jubilee. Coming out today and seeing what's gone on in the whole country, I just think it just tells people what, what, what we are and what we do in Britain. And in avenues across this land, 60 years of history is being marked. Even if in some cases, it doesn't look much like land. In Leicestershire, this pub has been turned into a ship for the occasion. These are the final preparations before people climb on board. Elsewhere, some have had no choice but to escape the wet weather. In Anglesey, the planned beach party has been cancelled. But that hasn't stopped the Royal Revellers. They've just moved events indoors. In Scotland, tables do line the streets. This lunch just one of a series of activities to honour the Queen in Edinburgh, a city so proud of its history. And there are people celebrating around the world. In Afghanistan, soldiers have put up bunting, joining in the festivities, even if they are far from home. The many parties across this long weekend are just beginning and it will take more than a little bad weather to stop them. Well, it's not just people dressed up for the occasion, pets and everything happy to get into this whole event. Somebody here just said it's the best party that they can ever remember. And you can say even people getting into the regal splendour, sitting on the throne and in the crown for an event that will continue for hours to come. Chris Buckler in York, thank you very much. Well, the focus will inevitably move to the River Thames this afternoon for the Royal Pageant with a thousand vessels heading the seven miles down river towards the Tower of London. It'll take them three hours and if you're positioned at any point along the river, you will see the whole procession go past you within a period of about one hour and ten minutes. That's the size of the flotilla that is involved. But let's go now to Tower Bridge because our Royal Correspondent Nicholas Witchell joins me now from there. And the word historic, we, we perhaps can be accused of overusing it, but not today. I think that's right, Simon. The, I think the most important thing, the most important piece of news to report right now in terms of this particular event is that the rain is easing off. It's still kind of spitting, drizzling a little bit, but nothing in uh, comparison to how it was earlier. The crowds are gathering as we speak. The atmosphere is ramping up. There are a couple of hundred Republican demonstrators uh, just over there. They've come to protest to put their particular point of view, but the overwhelming, the overwhelming uh, numbers who are gathered along the Thames today are here to support the monarchy, to show their gratitude to the Queen. Now, the people, of course, who've been organising this uh, pageant have been working on it for a couple of years now, and they are hoping that this will be one of the most spectacular images of this jubilee. So it all begins just after 2 o'clock. That's when the Queen and other members of the royal family, the Prince of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall, and Prince William and uh, the Duchess of Cambridge and others, they will be arriving down near Albert Bridge. Then at 2.40, as we've said the jubilee bells will peal church bells will ring across the country and that will be the signal for this jubilee pageant along the thames to begin to finally see those boats muster on the thames it just it just lifts the spirit and uh, a little bit of rain with all this enthusiasm around there'll be no spirits dampened on the thames today
At Downing Street, the Prime Minister reconfirmed to Andrew Marr something that is self-evident, that the Queen will never retire. She, in pursuing her duties, has been 100% dedicated profession. On the river, the boats have been moving into their final positions. This was the belfry, carrying the bells which will signal the start of the pageant being pushed upriver. The royal barge, which will carry the Queen and her immediate family, was having the finishing touches put to it, close attention, not surprisingly, to the rain canopy. The man in charge of the staging of the pageant says the damp weather won't matter. People were already taking their places along the riverbank undeterred. It won't dampen our spirits, we'll be here cheering her on. So it really is a very, very special occasion. Remember the coronation and the pouring rain then. Does it matter? Oh, well, it just makes, makes you feel proud to be British again. It's just a shame the weather couldn't have obliged. Good afternoon. A thousand vessels are preparing to travel in a grand procession along the River Thames in the Diamond Jubilee celebrations that are now taking to the water. The river pageant in honour of the Queen's 60-year reign is the largest to be held in London since the 17th century. And despite the rain, thousands of street parties are being held across the United Kingdom as part of the big lunch jubilee celebrations. Our Royal Correspondent Nicholas Witchell has our first report on the events of the day. The day is turning out to be, well, very British, and most especially in terms of the weather. The rain came down fairly constantly through the night and into the morning. And yet, despite the rain, tens of thousands of 